Okay. So with interest capitalization, uh, what the accounting standards are trying to do is to be true to this rule um, that the cost of the asset should include all the cost to get it to its location and its condition uh, ready for its intended use. So even though interest, you know, feels like it's like a cost of financing, it's, you know, it's, it's not the cost of a brick or cement or the cost of a, a laborer who's coming to build, but because we're looking at this all in approach of what does it really cost to get this asset to the location and condition for use, in some portion of the interest that we incur because we are building um, or using funds to build this asset, we are actually allowed to capitalize. And remember, capitalize means to make something an asset. So we are allowed to add some portion of the interest onto the cost of the asset. That's, that's the way you should be thinking about it. And of course, as the situation um, goes with a lot of these types of things in accounting, there's, there's multiple steps that you have to consider before you're actually allowed to capitalize the interest. And then there's a calculation that you have to go through to figure out how much interest you are allowed to capitalize. Because you can think that there is room to abuse um, this type of rule because what it allows the company to do is instead of putting the interest cost through the income statement immediately and having an expense that would cause their profits to go down, they're allowed to put the interest cost onto the cost of the asset and thereby only uh, expense it over time through depreciation. All right, so if the company has a lot of debt, um, you know, there might be a temptation to, I guess, commit some type of fraud where they add interest relating to loans um, onto co the cost of assets that really shouldn't be included in the cost of that asset, or they, you know, they kind of go overboard in terms of how much interest they add on. So what we'll do together now is first look at um, you know, the, I guess, the options for how to handle this interest, the, the three uh, conditions that have to exist in order for interest to be capitalized, we'll do an interest capitalization calculation and see how the company decides um, how much of the interest should be capitalized. So starting to read here, when mach machinery and equipment to be used by company are built rather than purchased, you have to think about the allocation of overhead costs. And so interest is part of, of this notion of overhead as opposed to direct costs. So brick, cement, that would be a direct cost. Overhead costs is, you know, things like depreciation, things like the interest that's being used, things like utilities and so on. So you could handle the overhead costs in one of two ways. You could either say, I'm just gonna leave off all the overhead and not put any of it onto the cost of the asset, which is bogus. I mean, can, can you hear that already sounds focus because part of those costs are costs to get the asset to the location and condition to use it or you could assign you know meaning allocate some portion of the overhead to uh, the construction uh, process which is what we are going to do we're going to calculate some portion of interest and that will be added on to the cost of the asset and um, so it's saying that you know the accounting standards prefer B and the which is you know signing and the cost for your asset that you build can never be more than than the price that would have been charged from an outside producer. So you can't start adding like all manner of costs onto this asset and it, the price becomes so huge because there will always be a comparison to say, well, if you had bought it you know outside, you would have paid so much less. So you know you have to limit the amount um, that you record to to what you would have paid on the outside. So interest costs during construction, uh, there are three options for how to treat the interest. Uh, you could capitalize no interest. You could um, you know, charge all of the interest, whether it relates to the construction or not, or you could capitalize only the actual interest incurred during construction. And it's gonna be number three that we will deal with, all right? We are going to capitalize interest, but it's gonna relate specifically to, uh, you know, the interest that is incurred while the asset is being constructed, okay? And so that's what we said, GAP requires, um, 
the third approach. And it does actually line up with this notion of a historical cost and bringing the asset to the location and condition necessary for its use. And so here's what I was saying about this. There's three things that you have to consider. Um, you know, this is like this typical, if you want to think about how this would, something like this would be asked, this would be like a typical multiple choice question to say, you know, which three conditions have to be met in order for interest to be capitalized. So the three things you need to think about is the assets have to be qualifying assets, meaning that um, it has to take some period of time to, to build the asset. It can't be like a piece of equipment that you can build in a day, right? Because interest is also, fun it's also a function of time, meaning that interest is being incurred over time. So you can't just capitalize interest to an asset um, that is being constructed in a very short period of time because how much interest was really incurred right during the construction period. So there must be a period of time to get the assets ready for its intended use. And um, then the capitalization period <clears throat> begins. So by capitalization period, meaning when we are allowed to make interest into an asset and add it onto the cost of whatever we are building, right? It, that begins when you have started making expenditures for the asset, right? The activities that are necessary to get the asset ready are in progress, meaning that construction has started and interest cost is being incurred. So again, you need qualifying assets. It means the asset has to be built over a period of time. To start capitalizing interest, you must have actually made payments towards the, the construction of the asset. Construction must have actually started and interest is being incurred, right? You can't capitalize interest if you aren't actually incurring, like you have a zero interest loan or you have no loans. Um, and then you continue uh, capitalizing interest while those three conditions are present. And when, when do you stop capitalizing interest? When the asset is ready or what they call substantially complete and ready for its intended use. A question would usually tell you a date by when the asset uh, would be ready for its intended use. And that's when you stop the interest capitalization. How much should you capitalize, right? So there's a rule, okay, as usual, some type of rule. The amount of interest that you capitalize is the lower of actual interest. Uh, let me actually just, sorry, let me, I'm highlighting too little. There we go. Uh, <clears throat> it's limited to the lower of actual interest. So that's the interest that you are paying to the bank during that time or avoidable interest. And avoidable interest is a defined term. Avoidable interest is the amount of interest costs during the period that a company would have avoided if it had not made expenditures for the asset, all right? So it's saying that, you know, if you had not built this asset, how much interest could you have um, avoided, meaning that you wouldn't have needed that money uh, that is attracting the interest. and and we have a way of, of calculating avoidable interest um, in, in the interest capitalization calculations. I'll show you how that's done. And so what does this mean since it's the lower of, right? You've got to be careful here. It's the lower of um, one or the other. So if the actual interest is 90,000 and the avoidable interest is 80, you can only capitalize 80. And by actual interest, we mean the interest that the bank is charging the company. Avoidable interest is a calculation that is based on separate rules. But actual is like, if you take out a loan tomorrow and they say we're charging you 20%, that's the actual interest. Or if the actual interest is 80 and the avoidable interest is 90, you are still capitalizing 80. So what they're trying to prevent here is companies having all kinds of loans out there and then um, you know capitalizing the interest or the actual interest from all these loans even though um, the, all that interest isn't actually avoidable um, you know part of the avoidable interest definition. So in other words you don't want to overstate the assets by adding interest onto the balance that um, that doesn't really belong to that asset. And so GAP requires uh, interest capitalization only if 
um, the amount is material. And remember, I've, I've shared with you before that materiality means that, you know, the if you didn't have this number in the financials, that it actually changes the decision making around, you know, the financial statements. So materiality is not one single number for everybody. It depends on the size of the company's uh, financials. So what could be material for the bodega on the corner is not going to be material for Tesla, right? It's You have to figure that out as, as looking at the company's books. So what Gap is saying is because they understand that interest capitalization is a, is a somewhat complicated calculation, um, you don't have to do the calculation if you know that the number is not going to be material, right? It's not a required uh, calculation. Um, how do we determine the, the amount of interest? It's multiplying the interest rates that are, are being uh, charged. And so we'll calculate what we call a weighted average interest rate um, by all the expenditures that they are making. But these expenditures are also weighted. Sorry. These expenditures are also weighted, and I'll show you how to, to weight those amounts. So, it's, so it is an interest calculation, right? An interest percentage multiplied by some amount, but um, we will weight the, the interest rates and weight the um, expenditures. And, you know, I, I put some steps here. You know, these, these steps are, are not necessarily going to... Um, you know, make a ton of, of sense outside of an example. And so what, um, what I'll do is actually do example number three with you guys, and we'll see once we've done that, if we've covered uh, all the steps in uh, capitalizing interest. So <clears throat> I will, um, this is still part of, of the same thing. So. I think what we'll do now is actually go to number three and um, and read it. And I will calculate it for you or with you. For those who are following along and, and actually doing you know, examples as we go, um, I was saying to the rest of the group that um, I have a blank interest capitalization template here that you that you could use if you wanted to. Not sure. Let me see that oh, this this computer doesn't have. Um, I have to go into Google Docs, but you guys can download it if you if you have. Let me just stop the share for a second so that I can open it and um, all right. I'm just getting my own blank. Thing, yeah. I thought I had downloaded it, but it looks like I have to. So take a minute and download the document if you want it. I'm just fixing my sheet here so I can bring it into our uh, workings area. All right, so I've copied the sheet to um, the class example calculations. I've copied the, the template, I guess, for lack of a better word, that I will use to, um, to answer question three. 
copied it over to the class example calculations document that you all have access to so, you, so that we all can follow along what I'm doing, right? And so I'm gonna read question three and we'll see how um, how to set this up. This also is, is explained in, in your textbook and they also go through all the steps as well. And, and we can visit that those pages after this if need be. So Hanson Company is constructing a building, right? Construction began of, on February the 1st. So they remember part of, of the conditions that, you know, for interest capitalization is that the activities, as they call it, um, have actually started. And so that, that means that by February 1st, that condition is met and was completed on December the 31st. So if it was completed on December the 31st, then the other part of the theory that we read about how interest capitalization stops when the asset is substantially complete, that means that we have to stop capitalizing on December the 31st right? Expenditures were 1.8 million on March the 1st. So remember, there was a requirement that you can only start capitalizing once expenditures have actually been made. So even though the construction began on February the 1st, the fact that our first payment was only made on March the 1st means that this is the date that we will use, right, to begin that weighted um, calculate the weighted average a calculation to see how much interest we can capitalize. So you have a 1.8 million expenditure on March the 1st, 1.2 million on June the 1st, and 3 million on, <clears throat> excuse me, December the 31st. That's, and, and if you know anything about construction, I mean, I'm not the biggest construction guru, but uh, the, a basic thing that does happen with construction is progress payments. You never ever, and maybe this is like just a life lesson for, for everyone. You never ever pay for your construction, everything up front, right? People will just run away with your money and laugh all the way to the bank. You got to pay them in stages based on, you know, what percentage of the job has been completed. So that's why the, you know, the, the payments are happening over time. Then it says that Hanson Company borrowed a million dollars on March the 1st. So years, years where, you know, the loan is coming in where we will that loan will attract interest and so on and they have a five-year very high interest rate 12 percent note to help finance construction of the building so this is what we would uh, refer to as specific debt for the construction okay it's specific in addition the company had outstanding all year a 10% five year 2 million note payable and an 11% four year 3.5 million note payable. So this is just like the general debt that the company has outstanding anyway. So what we will do when, and you'll see this when we, um, when we calculate the, the uh, interest capitalization, we will first consider, you know, the interest related to the debt that is specific for the construction. And then afterwards, we will look at some of the, you know, the gen, I guess the general debt that exists and see how much of that um, we would also be able to apply to the interest cap, uh, capitalization calculation. So this, um, you know, the instructions are basically just asking you four things, which I will calculate with you in a minute here on, on, the, um, on the document. It's, um, it's kind of, you know, prompting every step, but I just want to warn you that sometimes the way these questions are written and in the instructions, it will just say this, journalize the interest capitalization for the year. It won't even, um, it won't take you through every step. So you basically have to know the steps to follow to get to this, which is essentially the final step in the calculation. All right. So let's begin. Um, if you're writing along with me or whatever, you know, find a, a clean, Bigish piece of paper, or if you're doing it in Excel, whatever, open a new uh, tab because this you can you see uh, as I go down. There's a lot of stuff that is going to happen, and everything that every time I write something in red, that's the next step of the process of calculating um, the interest to be capitalized. Right. So the first <clears throat> step here is for us to consider all the expenditures that go into um, 
or that that we've made, so payments that we've made um, as part of this construction. And what we will do is um, see <clears throat> when the payment was made and until when we are capitalizing interest. And we would only be able to include that payment for the amount of time, you know, that um, from when it was made until when uh, construction ends. In this case, it ends conveniently on December the 31st. So let me show you. I'll stop talking and actually show you how it works. So the date that we'll use is March the 1st. And it's not, I don't know if we were given a, uh, well, let's assume that it's 2021, right? The first amount is 1.8 million, all right? And it's asking what's the capitalization period. So over here, you are you are going either to the end of the construction period or the end of the uh, company's um, year, you know, the accounting year, whichever one is sooner. So if we go back to the question, you see that they said that construction was completed on December the 31st. So what we say here is we are allowed to capitalize interest on this payment from March March the 1st until December the 31st. So we have to count out the number of months that apply. So it's all of March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So the fraction or capitalization period is 10 months out of 12 months. The reason you can't do 12 out of 12 and you have to apportion it is that, remember the rule said, you can only start capitalizing interest once a payment has actually been made. And since this payment was made on the 1st of March, you can only capitalize interest relating to this payment from March until the end of the construction, not more. So that's the way we weight, weighted average. That's the way we're going to weight the um, expenditures. So what we do now is we just take the 1.8 million and we multiply it by 10 months out of 12 months to give us what becomes the amount that we can use as our weighted average expenditure. So you see how it's lower. By doing this, obviously we're saying that you're not allowed to capitalize interest on the entire 1.8. You can only capitalize interest on 1.5 million because in essence, you know, if interest is calculated for a whole year, the, the, um, that you can only take 10 months out of 12 months of interest that relates to this payment. It's a little bit, um, feeling like weird, like the right way, around, I mean, wrong way around, like why don't you apportion the, the actual interest, but I'll show you later on why we have to go this way. So you do March and then June the 1st is another um, payment that is made, right? This is based on the question, it's 1.2 million. So I'm gonna put in the 1.2 million and now you can guess already, we're gonna count from June 1st to December 31st when the, um, when the construction ends. And again, that's also conveniently probably when the company's year ends. If construction had ended in September, like th September the 30th, you would only count from June to September. All right, that's what I'm trying to show you because it says that you can only capitalize up to the point where the asset is substantially complete, but it works that it ends on December 31st. So all of June, I'm counting like this because sometimes people see June and they just say six months. It's not six months because it's June the 1st. So all of June, July, August, September, October, November, December, because you're counting up to December the 31st. So it's seven months out of 12 months. So you're going to say 1.2 million. And this thing is trying to jump the gun here. Uh, let me just start from scratch. It won't let me adjust anything. <laughs> okay, so 1.2 million multiplied by 7 over 12. Okay, so 700,000. So we're only allowed to wait in 700,000 out of that uh, expense when it comes to capitalizing interest. December the 31st, that's the last day. That's basically the day when everything is substantially complete. We made a payment of $3 million, it says over there. So we put the $3 million in, but remember the capitalization period is being expressed as months out of the year. So since we are on the last day of the capitalization period, it's zero. This 
this expense is not going to wait in. You won't be able to uh, capitalize interest related to that payment because it's being made on the last day um, of the construction period. So you really have don't have interest uh, incurred related to that payment during the construction period. Feels a little bit unfair, but um, but that's how the rules dictate. And I mean, it kind of makes sense because any monies that you um, had from your loans during the time were not paid over yet to the um, contractors. So it really doesn't apply um, for interest to be capitalized. You could have been using that money for anything else during this time, all right? So in total, you made payments of 6 million, but you are only allowed to uh, capitalize interest related to payments of 2.2 million. So they limit you in terms of what you can do. And I'm sure for those who are you know, still awake and paying attention, you can understand why there needs to be a limit. Otherwise, um, companies may go ahead and just uh, put interest on the entire 6 million into the cost of the asset. So, and then the asset is overstated and they're able to make the income, their profits really big because they don't have to include interest in the income statement. And um, it's just wrong because, you know, all of that, all of the interest related to the 6 million does apply to the asset. So now we take, and this is normally where people get stuck, okay? We have to start working with this 2.2 million now. That's the number that we focus on. The 6 million for all intents and purposes is basically you know, you can ignore it now. You're focusing on the 2.2 million and you want to ask yourself for this 2.2 million, how much of this uh, amount was covered by specific debt that the company took out related to the, the building and how much would have been covered by what we call general debt, right? That the company had before. And so if you look at the... Um, if you look at the, the question, you see that the company borrowed a million dollars, right? 12% note on March the 1st. So specific debt for, um, for this uh, construction is a million dollars, right? So out of the 2.2 million, you're gonna say a million dollars, right? The specific, oops, sorry, I'm missing a zero. A million dollars is the specific debt at 12%. And I'm going to write over here specific debt so that when you look at this again, um, specific debt taken, taken out for this construction. So we separate it out because it's at a totally different interest rate. Sorry, I have two percentages here. Um, totally different interest rate to, um, to the other debt that the company has. You separate it out, and this, go this is going towards step two, which is calculating avoidable interest. Remember, avoidable interest is the interest that we know um, we could have avoided if we had not made these payments for the construction. So it means the interest on 2.2 million, but it's split between interest on the debt that was actually taken out to pay for the construction and interest on other debt that was used right as part of these payments. So we say a million times 12%. And here we don't have to apportion it for any number of months or anything like that because we've already done the apportioning up here. So now you might say, but how does that make sense? The reason we can't say a million times 12% times you know, seven over 12 or whatever is because every expenditure was made at a different time, right? So we don't apportion the interest amount. We, we apportion or weight the expenditures so that by the time we calculate the interest, we don't have to do any type of apportioning anymore. Right? There's no way you can apportion interest if you have three different time frames in which to, to do it. Right? You can't say a million times 12% times 10 over 12, a million times 12 times 7 over 12, and so on. So you, report, you weight the expenses and you leave the interest as 100% because the expense is already weighted. 
So I have 2.2 million weighted average accumulated expenditures. It's being split between a million specific debt. And then because I have to get up to 2.2 million, right? My answer over here has to be the same as this number, right? I'm trying to apportion that number. So that means that I still have, right? I still have 1.2 million of uh, debt for which I need to calculate interest that is avoidable. So now where did that money come from? If you go back to the question, you see that the company had other debt outstanding during the year. There was a 10% five-year 2 million note payable and an 11% four-year 3.5 million note payable. So what we're saying here now is that this 1.2 million of, of um, payments that they made was made out of some combination of the other loans that are outstanding during the year. And so because it's a combination, we don't know which interest rate to use, right? Because look, they're at different, one is at 10% and one is at 11%. So you can say, oh, just say 10 plus 11 divided by, by two. But the problem is you can really only do that if the loans had exactly the same dollar amount, but they don't, right? And so as a result, we are forced to go into step three or step two B, which is, to calculate a weighted average interest rate on this debt that we, um, you know, on the, these monies that we used, okay? And so I'll go slowly and show you. So the first one that we will tackle is the 10% five-year, two million note. So we had, I'm just identifying, um, you know, what, what debt I'm referring to. It's a 10% five, you know, the principal or the loan amount is 2 million and the interest is 10%, right? I'm sorry, the interest is 10% and, and so the amount is 200,000, right? So it's 2 million times 10%. And so then the 11% four-year note at 3.5 million is the next piece. Right, 11% four-year note. That is 3,500,000. And the interest here is going to be the 3.5 million times 11%. That's the annual interest on this note, right? 3.5 million times 11%. So what we find is that we can basically say that we had overall 5.5 million of additional uh, money available loans that we took out. And the total interest is 585,000. That's the, the, the average interest amount based on the dollar amounts of the loan and the percentages. So what we do is, and there's probably too much space in between, um, these two things so you can see it a little bit easier. What we do is we calculate the weighted average interest rate. We take the total, and I'll write total over here so you know which numbers I'm taking. You take the total interest divided by the total principal, and you come up with you come up with a percentage that you are going to use in the avoidable interest calculation above. Notice how this number is not 10.5%, right? It's not 10 plus 11 divided by two. It's, it's higher than that because the, the 3.5 million note that has a higher principal also has a higher interest rate, okay? So we can't just average the rates and say that we're done. So now this number, and I know this is, you know, this gets, kind of hairy, but I'm trying to be very systematic with you so that you can see how we go from one thing to the next. So now this number, this 10.64% is going to go up over here and be the percentage that we use in our calculation. Okay, 10.64, and I'll put it with the same color for those who are looking at this document so you know where it came from. And what you do now is you finish your avoidable interest calculation by saying of the 2.2 million of expenditures, right, that I'm allowed to calculate interest on, 1 million is from specific debt 
that I took out for this project. And so that's 120,000 of interest. 1.2 million is from the general debt that I had, you know, during the year. And so I'm going to calculate how much interest is on that. Let me just make this into a proper number so it doesn't look so crazy. <clears throat> So 127,636 or 680, depending on, let me, let me do this. And yeah, so I'm just keeping a whole number so that you, when you guys are typing it on your, on your calculators, you're seeing numbers that look right. So this is from the general debt that was outstanding, right, all year. And so we're saying that we needed to use this money to, to pay for our construction. So the avoidable interest, if we had never done the, the construction, we would have been able to save, if we had never done the construction, we would have been able to save $247,680 on interest if we had not done the construction. This is the amount of interest we could have avoided, right? Because it's saying you maybe would not have taken out, um, you know, extra debt, and even the debt that you that you um, had outstanding, you wouldn't have used that money for um, for this project. So remember, the rule was that we capitalize the lower of avoidable interest or actual interest, right? That's in, um, that's, I'll show you, I'll go back. Yeah, you, cal you capitalize the lower of actual interest or avoidable interest. At this time, we've now calculated avoidable interest. So our next step is to calculate actual interest. And actual interest is, is just a regular interest calculation that's saying what, you know, borrowings did we have outstanding and how much interest did it attract for the year. There's no consideration of any type of, um, you know, expenditures that were made. It's, it's just a, a straight interest calculation. So we go back to the question to see um, all the, the the payment or all the loans, excuse me, that we had outstanding. You had a 1 million loan that was taken out on March the 1st and it's a 12%. So you can start with that. So this is a 12% five year note or five year loan. It's a principal of a million. But yeah, you have to be careful, okay? Because it was only outstanding for 10 months. The bank would have only charged you actual interest for 10 months because you took it out on March the 1st, right? So taken out on March 1, so it was not standing the whole year. So the way you're gonna calculate the interest is a million times the 12% interest rate, but then times 10 over 12, right? That's how you, um, that's how we'll do it. So a million times 12% times 10 out of 12, okay? So 100,000. And then the other two notes were basically, you know, we're basically taking the same things from up here, the 10% 10, 10 note and the 11% note, it's same, right? 2 million and 3.5 million, you're just bringing it down from there. So total, you know, the total debt is 6.5 million, not that we really care. And then the um, hopefully these formulas will hold. Otherwise, I probably just have to place them as values. So I don't know. So six hundred eighty-five thousand is the actual interest for the year. So now, if you ask yourself, what is lower? I mean, this is kind of obvious. What is lower between two hundred forty-seven and six eighty and six hundred eighty-five? Obviously, the lower amount is right. So. Avoidable interest, I'll just type it in here. Avoidable interest is 247680. Actual interest is 685000. Therefore, the lower amount is 247680 and that will be capitalized. Oops, capitalized. All right. 
So that's that's the answer in terms of what to capitalize, but we haven't actually answered the question completely because we still have to do the journal entry for the capitalization. So this is the last step after this, we'll take a break. So, you know, think about what this journal entry represents. You are adding on to the cost of the building, right? The um, the interest, the actual, sorry, not actually the avoidable interest, which is what you are capitalizing. You have to record the fact that there is interest expense that you will actually expense and not capitalize. And you also are told in the question that interest was paid in cash. So there has to be some type of a credit to cash, right? So the, the first thing is going to be debiting the building, right? You add the avoidable interest uh, onto the cost. That's what you're doing here. So you're gonna take the 247680. That's what uh, gets capitalized, made into an asset, right? And then you still have to record interest expense for the remaining amount of interest that you did incur during the year, but you aren't actually capitalizing. So how that works is you can ask yourself, how much interest did I actually pay for during the year? What's the cash that was spent? It's the 685,000, right? That's the actual interest that you uh, incurred and, and um, you know, paid in cash during the year. So of that, 247,680 gets added onto the cost of the building and the remainder is going to be an expense that goes through your income statement, 437,320. And so that's the journal entry to capitalize the interest. So we've gone you know, from step one through to step five uh, to actually get to the answer. And that's what I meant when um, I said some of the questions are a little bit dangerous because they just say journalize the, the interest and you have to remember that you have to follow all the steps one after another to get to, um, to get to the point of actually being able to make the journal entry. So at, at this stage, um, you know, I, I, I think we're due for a break and processing this a little bit. And then when I come back, um, I'll take questions and I can revisit parts of this. And then you guys will have an opportunity to do a calculation yourself. If anybody has a question already, um, feel free to, to ask me now. Otherwise, uh, take a break now from 11.36 to 11.46, all right?
<clears throat> oh, hi, Professor. Hi. Hi. Um, did you upload the uh the work? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for. Are you talking about uh, um the announcement that I have to send out with the information from Professor Maharaj? Oh, I I mean the work we just did the um inter oh. yeah capitalization. It's in um it's in the Google Doc. Oh, but when I refresh it, I don't see the work we just did. So <clears throat> I was just wondering whether you uploaded or not. Maybe I'm confused. Are you asking me whether it's in the Google Doc or you're asking me whether it's on Blackboard? Uh, it's uh, whether it's on Blackboard. It's... On Blackboard, if the answer is in question three, Anson Company Interest Capitalization Solution. Oh, yeah. I, now I see. I didn't see the copy of sheets under the bottom of the Excel sheet. Oh, you I understand uh, what you're asking now. Okay, okay. I got you. Yeah. You, you okay? All right. Yeah, I'm okay. okay. Thank okay. you. right back. Right. 
So um, those of you who maybe have your email going to your phone or your email open would have seen that um, that I actually just sent you the, the email drafting tips that Professor Maharaj um, gave me. So, uh, you know, you can use that. That wasn't the only thing she spoke about last Wednesday. She spoke about many other things to do with, um, with communication, but you can use that along with other stuff that you may have written down or whatever to complete the quick assignments. It will probably only be two or three sentences to say what were some of the key takeaways that you had from um, from her visit. So, sorry. You know, I we finished this example. I'm sure there's still confusion. It's, you know, confusion usually is raging with, um, <laughs> with this work with interest capitalization. So I'm going to open the floor for a minute um, for people to, uh, by a minute, I mean, take a minute to think about something you want me to repeat, a calculation that wasn't clear. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll just do another one. I have, um, you know, I, I think three of them. So I'll be, you know, your DJ Khaled for the day and, and just keep doing another one and another one right until um hopefully it, it sinks in so take a minute here and um and think about whether there's some part of this calculation that you just want me to revisit before we go to the next one All right, so for now, it seems like no one has questions, which then um, makes me think that maybe a better approach to the next thing, instead of you just hearing me talking and talking, is um, for us to kind of give you a few minutes to do a calculation on your own, and then I can follow up by... Um, Okay, this is not where I need to be. Then I can follow up by by doing the calculation as, as well. And we can see, you can see if you have the same answer as me. So why don't we go ahead and um, look at number 17 together. And what we'll do is um, read the question. And then I'm going to give you guys some time to do one step at a time, right, of the interest capitalization and have someone, uh, you know, volunteer to, to give their answer or I can volunteer someone to give their answer um, and we'll see how how it works because I think it's, it's best to figure out whether you know what's going on by actually, um, you know, trying to do the thing yourself. So, Let's read this question together. Then what I'll do is I'll put up the solution right from the previous um, uh, question that I, I did. And then you can try to, to follow. If you don't have access to these questions, you need to take a picture of it now so that you have it on your phone or something so that you can actually do the work. Otherwise, download it from Blackboard so you have it on your computer. Um, if you don't know where it is on Blackboard, if you scroll to chapter 10, it's over here in the notes for chapter 10. All the questions are at the end of the notes. So a company constructs a building for its own use. 
Construction began on January the 1st, 2014. So that's when construction began. So that's one of the conditions that have to be met and was still ongoing at year end. So since the asset was not yet complete at year end, we will stop capitalization at the end of the year for that year. It doesn't mean that you stop capitalization completely, but you can't capitalize more than what belongs to that year. So we'll go from whenever the first payment is made, which appears to be January the 1st, until December the 31st. The expenditures for construction were as follows. On January the 1st, we had a $500,000 expenditure. March the 31st is $600,000. June 30th is $400,000. And October the 31st is $600,000. So a number of expenditures uh, related to, um, to this you know, asset being constructed. Just you know, to remind you, those expenditures would be weighted time weighted uh, within, you know, this part of um, the calculation. To help finance the construction, the company arranged a 7% construction loan on January the 1st for 700,000. 700, so this means that this loan has been outstanding the whole year, um, you know, at, the, and at that interest rate. So that's going to be part of the avoidable interest calculation. The company's other borrowings outstanding for the whole year consisted of a $3 million loan and a $5 million note with interest rates of 8% and 6% respectively. Prepare the journal entry required for interest capitalization at December 31, 2014. This is what I meant by often the, you know, the question is just one line and you have to know that you have to follow, you know, those four steps before you get to the fifth step that is the actual journal entry and assume interest was paid in cash. So now you know that the credit on your journal entry will be to cash and you have to show all calculations. So the first step, right, as I've said before, is to do the weighted average accumulated expenditures. If you are looking for a sheet, like if you're really working along with me and you want to use a sheet in Excel, this is the interest capitalization template um, that you can use. So I'm going to give us, let's say, two minutes until 11.55 for people to get, well, okay, let's say three minutes, 11.57, giving you your, getting you uh, time to get your bearings, to download documents that you need or open documents that you have to use, uh, figure out what you want to do. If you need to take a picture of this thing, take a picture, but get ready to start trying to actually put pen to paper or to type up um, the answer to this question, okay? This is not like a regular classroom where I can walk around and see what people are doing. If you are busy with something completely unrelated to this class, um, you know, that's your choice. We're adults, but remember you're paying me to teach you right now. So you want to make good use of, of the time that you're paying for. So get, get it together until 11.57. I'm giving you time to just set yourself up. And then at that point, the clock will start ticking for you guys to do the first step, which is the weighted average accumulated expenditures. Okay. And if people have questions for me about where to find documents and stuff in the next two minutes, I'll be happy to answer them.
All right. So the hope is that everybody is ready to go now. So what I want you to do is answer the first step of that question. Using the information from number 17, you are going to do the weighted average accumulated expenditures. Okay. I'm leaving up the solution from uh, question number three so that you can see how I did it and then use that as the formula um, to do it yourself. I'm going to give you, um, how many expenditures were there? About five. I'm going to give you about uh, six or seven minutes, right? So by, by 12.04, I'll ask someone to, to walk me through what they did um, with step one. And please ask me questions. You don't have to suffer in silence if you need help on where to start. So you have from now until 12.04 to do step one, which is the weighted average accumulated expenditures for question 17.
Ian, you're ready to answer as soon as we 12 or 4. I'm going to take your answer, okay? Yes, All right, let's go. So this is going to be for, let me just, um, actually, I can just do it this way. Let me just rename this so the people who are actually on the sheet know where I am. This is this was question 17. This was question three. All right, so Gian, go ahead. Tell me what you did. Gian? Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, January 1st. 2014. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let me see if I do it like this, if it will stick. Okay. Yeah, the amount is five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And the capitalization period is um 12 over 12. Right, because it's the whole year, right? January yeah. 1 to December 31. So the answer is five hundred thousand, right? But yeah. you can get a hundred percent of that can be weighted in. Good. Next. Yeah. And March 31st. Mm -hmm. Six hundred thousand dollars is a month, mm -hmm. and the capitalization period is nine over twelve. Okay, and yeah, we got to be careful how we count our months, right? March thirty first, yes. not March first. So between March thirty first and December thirty first is nine months. And what did you get as your expenditure? I got four fifty thousand dollars. Right, because it's six hundred thousand times nine over twelve. Good. Next. And June 30, mm -hmm. the amount is $400,000. Mm -hmm. And the period is six, uh, six over 12. Mm -hmm. period. And the amount is yeah $200,000. Mm -hmm. That's just half, right? Good. Yeah. And uh, October 31st. We got yeah six hundred thousand dollars. Mm, two over twelve. Mm -hmm. From October thirty first to December thirty first yes. is two months. And what's your average? And we, yeah, we got one hundred thousand dollars. Good. So the what what did you have for the total of expenditures here? A uh, total two thousand one hundred thousand dollars. Two million uh -huh. one hundred thousand. And what and did you have here? Yeah. Expenditure is uh one thousand two hundred fifty thousand dollars. One million two. Wait, where am I? One million one two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. Good. So thank you. So this is this is the amount, right? This is the amount that we are allowed to calculate interest on right avoidable interest on so we can't use the 2.1 we have to use the uh 1.2 1, and um this is the amount that we are allowed to use thank you Gion. that was correct does anybody have um, questions about something that doesn't sit right with it yes, professor. yeah I have a question about the capitalization period so uh suppose it was uh, on the second line, uh, suppose it was March 1st, uh, 2014 for the $600,000 amount. Uh, so if it was March 1st, uh, do we put uh, 10 over 12 yes. on the capitalization? Yes, because yes, you count from March 1st to December 31st is 10 months, but because it's March 31st, the month of March is finished, so it's only nine months. All right, got it. Yeah, and and that happened in question three, right? We had a we had a March first, and on a so so we got to be so careful here yeah, with the dates when we look at the dates and make sure that we're copying them down correctly. Other questions? All 
All right. So thank you, Gion. So now let's move on to whatever the next step is. Aha, avoidable interest calculation, right? Avoidable interest calculation. Um, so I'll give you, let me see, five, six minutes. Let's say six minutes to, I'm, I'm making the time not that long because I don't want people to, you know, just be twiddling their thumbs, to do the avoidable interest calculation for, um, for this question. I'll just go back here to remind you how it works. The avoidable interest uh, is based on the uh, weighted average number that you just calculated. That should be the total uh, um, dollar amount that you're calculating interest on, you have to look to see whether there was specific debt that was taken out um, for this job or this construction. If you look at the question, you see that the company did take out a 7%, 700,000 loan. That will be the first line on the avoidable interest is the 700,000 loan, but you can see that you spent more than 700,000, which means you also have to go and look at the other debt that was outstanding and calculate a weighted average, right? Um, interest on that debt. So what I'll do is, and let me see if I can make this smaller so you can actually see everything. I'm gonna leave the, the avoidable interest uh, calculation up here for you guys. Um, I'm trying to see if I can, you know, never mind. Let me get rid of two unnecessary rows here. And I'll leave this up for you. I'm trying to show that it's connected to the expenditures, but it's it's just becoming too much of a hassle. And let's count another five minutes now from, so it's 12.10, so by 12.15, someone, uh, I know Antora was previously um, uh, volunteering or somebody else can volunteer to give me the avoidable interest calculation for question 17. This is the answer for question three. So from now until 12.15, feel free to ask me questions during this time if you have any. And Tora, are you volunteering with the answer or you, do you have a question for me? You too, for the answer. Okay, so I'll, I'll take you. I just want to make sure that you weren't asking me something. Okay, I'll take you in three minutes.
All right, and Tora, take it away. Tell me what you want me to do here. Um, well, so our next step is um, uh, for the found available interest uh, capital uh, calculation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have accumulated expenditure one uh, 12 million fifty thousand. So we have a seven um, seven hundred thousand for the seven person. We got for uh, forty nine thousand. Okay, so out of the one million two hundred fifty thousand, seven hundred thousand is specific debt that we have had outstanding the sorry <laughs> that we have had outstanding the whole um the whole year so it's 49,000 correct thank you and we, uh, we have a remaining one of five uh 55,000 550,000 yeah okay so we know we have to end on 1,250,000 so the remaining amount to your point is 550,000. Do we know what the interest rate is over here? Uh, it's it's uh, 6.75. Okay, I got but, this. Okay, so yeah. you're going to walk me through how to do that. How do I do the 6.75? Um, we have a uh, 3 million for 8 person. Right, so if you go back to the question, you see that there's a 3 million loan at 8%, so it's 3 million times 8%. Right? 240,000. Thank you. So I'm just putting here 3 million times 8% so people know where that came from. And again, if you're confused about where we're getting this from, it's just from the question that said that there was a 3 million loan at 8% and a 5 million loan. For 6%. At 6%. So 5 million times 6%, 300,000. Then with average interest rate, uh, total interest uh, divided by total principal. So the total interest is 540,000 divided by the 8 million total principal gives you 6.75% as your weighted average interest rate from the other debt. That's correct. 37,125. What is, why does this keep happening? Sorry, guys. I'm obviously having some type of technical problem here. Thank you. 37,125. Let me just format these so that we can see what these numbers actually are. All right. And so now we add these two together. 86,125. 86,125. And that is known as avoidable interest and we interest. Have to remember yeah that we have to um we have to journalize the lower of the avoidable or the actual interest does anybody have questions on calculating this avoidable interest before we move on to um the next step which is you guys calculating actual interest uh professor when yes. i calculated when i calculated the uh interest rate i came i I got 0 0.0675, not mm -hmm. 0 0.75. Yeah, so 0 0.0675, if you multiply, you still need to then multiply by 100 to make it a percentage. Oh. Yeah, oh, you, you were right. We're just we're just making we're just expressing it as a percentage. But if you use 0 0.0675 multiplied by 550,000, you're also going to come out to 37,000, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I forgot to turn it into yeah, the no, no worries. <laughs> it's good. Ask the questions now. What else, guys? Ask. Anything else? Okay. So thank you, Antora. This is all correct and um, well done here. Yeah. The next step that needs to happen is for us all to calculate the actual interest for the year. If I refer back to question three, just to remind you that actual interest is the interest on all the debt 
that is outstanding for the company for the year. So remember, this company has the 700,000 uh, debt at 7% from that's outstanding for the whole year. So you don't have to do a fraction like we did in the other example. And then it also has these two loans that were outstanding the whole year. So I'm going to give you another, it's probably too much time, but it's okay. I'll give you five minutes to calculate actual interest calculation and then choose between actual or avoidable, which one is lower. And someone will, um, someone can uh, again volunteer to answer the question, all right? So actual interest calculation for question 17. All right, we've got about a minute left. Uh, I'm open to anybody who wants to volunteer to answer the rest of this.
All right, and Tora, your hand was up first. I'll go with you. What do you want to tell me about actual interest calculation? I'm just trying to, uh, I'm just trying. Uh, we have a 77% 70, for uh, 700,000. Right. And we have a 8% for okay. 3 million. Yes, so 3 million. And we have a six person for five million. We have a total of 589,000. This is the actual interest that we paid to the bank, right? The actual interest that we pay to the bank. Thank you. So between those two, let's look, right? How much did you have for avoidable interest, Antora? Uh, avoidable uh, is uh, 86,125. Mm -hmm. So that's the interest we could have avoided if we hadn't done the construction at all. The actual, you just told me, is 589,000. Oops. 589,000. So obviously we choose the lower amount per the rules, right? The lower amount is 86,125. That is what we will add on to the cost of the building. Did you do the journal entry already? Do you want to try it? Yes. Or? Okay. So we move on, right, to the journal entry. So what do you want me to do? Uh, building debit uh, 86,125. Right, so the, the amount of interest that we're allowed to capitalize is what we debit to the building, yes. Uh, cash credit, 589,000. Cash gets credited with all the interest that we are actually paying. Mm -hmm. And interest expense debit, 45, uh, uh, 453,875. Uh, Why do I have a different number to you? 502875. Did I do something wrong? Sounded like you had 400 and something. It's, oh, yeah, it's a 502875. Okay. okay. So um so so that's that's the journal entry, right? That's so now we've gone from top to bottom. We've done the weighted average calculations. We've done, thank you, Antora. We've done the avoidable interest. We've done the weighted average interest that we had to use for part of um, that avoidable interest calculation. Calculated actual interest. You compare the actual to the avoidable and choose the lower amount. It's the amount that is lower that you capitalize to the cost of the asset that you've constructed and the rest goes to interest expense. Questions, anybody on anything? Professor? Yes. Actually, I'm a little confused about, okay. yeah. So the pre for previous question. Yes. Um, the actual interest calculation, the first 12% uh, for your note should be uh, much We're talking talk about uh, question three? E, e, yes. Okay. Say again. I I'm comparing the, this as question three and the 17. Yeah, that's fine. So, okay. Yeah. And then, so previous question uh, the uh, for the actual interested calculation part, the first 12% uh, mm -hmm. five year note mm -hmm. should be. Uh, uh, it was taken. Year. It was taken out on March the 1st, so you have to yes. portion. Mm -hmm. But why don't need to much put? Uh, why don't you need to do that for this question? Yes. Yeah, because in this, that. yeah, in this question, the, 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 in, the debt wasn't taken out on March the 1st. It was taken out on January the 1st. So it's been outstanding for the whole year. I see. So 12 months out of 12 months. OK. Uh, but five. Mm -hmm. OK, yeah. For this uh, question three, it said uh, about 1 million on March 
fast on uh, five years. So that's why we need to calculate that. Yeah, because when, right, when you calculate actual interest, you're actually calculating what the bank is going to charge you for. And mm -hmm. because this was January 1st to December the 31st, they're going to charge us for a year. But because year we borrowed on March the 1st and we're calculating to December the 31st, the bank is only going to charge us actual interest for 10 months of the year. I totally understand. Thank you so much. Okay, no problem. What else, guys? What other questions here on question three or question 17, frankly? Either one. Okay, think about it if there's anything else. I'm not gonna do question 18 because it's gonna be a repetition. I'll, I'll, let, I'll save it. Um, and maybe if we need to do a review before the next test or you can, um, you can uh, do it yourself. The answer is obviously um, on here, the question 18, the answer's there. So you could use it as a test to, to see if you actually really understand this work. Right, so I, I won't belabor the point because if we do another example, it's just going to be the same thing over and over again. Um, what I do want to do here before we close out is is just finish going through the last little bit of um, of the handout, the last little bit of the theory. Um, this piece about interest rates over here is still to do with interest capitalization, and it's just giving you the way that we calculate the avoidable interest, that um, you first apply any specific borrowings, right? You first put down, um, if you go up here, they, they're talking about this piece, when you're calculating the avoidable interest, you first use any specific borrowings related to um, this uh, construction, and then afterwards, any remaining amount is, is going to use that weighted average interest rate that we calculated. And then um, over here, they're just talking about some special issues related to interest capitalization, which isn't really even, um, you know, that big of a deal, but I, I'll go, I'll just read it quickly. Interest costs incurred in the purchase of land to be used for a building site or part of the building's cost, not the land. So they're just saying that if you're constructing a building and there's interest that is part of, you know, at there's loans and stuff that went out part of, of the uh, cost of the land to put the building on, you still put that interest part as part of the building. Um, we don't even get that involved in our examples here or in the textbook. It doesn't get that crazy. Crazy. And um, forget about number two, really, it's, it's not relevant. I think the only thing that you probably want to just be aware of is if you borrow money and you don't use all of the money and you put the money in the bank and it earns interest somewhere, any interest that you earn on that money before you've actually started spending it to make payments should not be netted against the interest expense that you incurred. So if a question says something like, you know, the company also earned interest of, you know, $20,000 while the money was sitting in the bank before they started making payments, don't get confused. You don't have to use that amount in any of your calculations, all right? So that's just things to bear in mind um, as you do the calculation, but not like it's not as important as being able to actually do the, the, uh, the steps of the calculation itself. Um, so that's kind of the end of the interest capitalization. The last part of the chapter is just about research and development. I think, you know, I'll, I'll go through some of these bullets, but the biggest takeaway for them is that for the most part, research and development is treated as an expense um, under US GAAP, okay, under um, international accounting standards. Uh, you know, research is treated as an expense, but up to a certain point, and then when it becomes technologically feasible, the, the rest of the development costs are actually capitalized, and that comes up in your in your book. But what do you need to remember? This is a very conservative approach that GAP takes. Research and development costs are expensed, right, uh, when they are incurred. Um, because of the amount of uncertainty around that. So if you work at Google and you're an accountant at Google, you'll see that there are millions of dollars, probably hundreds of millions of dollars that are being expensed every year for um, research and development, right? And 
Here they just, you know, define what research is. We know that it's basically investigating and trying to figure out a new things uh, to build something new. And development is going from that that phase of 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 investigating and analyzing to actually planning and designing and trying to build something. If you think about um, Facebook, is you know, Facebook's been in a lot of trouble this past few weeks, a lot of things going on, but I'll just use them as an example with this Oculus uh, virtual reality set that they have. You know, at some point they were doing research around that and they started developing it. Um, all that stuff has to be expensed. They will now only start to, I guess, or they've made money now by selling those headsets and now they're trying to create a metaverse where everybody will be in some, you know, alternate reality when they're in this metaverse. Um, yeah, so R&D expenses include depreciation, amortization, doesn't matter what it is, it's, it's an expense, but um, <clears throat> there are, there are, or there is an exception around software, okay, so there's a lot of companies are engaged, obviously, in developing software. GAP establishes a timeline for the purposes of accounting for software development costs. Any software costs incurred from initial development activity until technological feasibility of the software are expensed as incurred. So this is where GAP follows international accounting standards a little bit, because I guess the software companies lobbied enough for, for this to become a reality, because after they've proven that the software is technologically feasible, but before it's available for release, they're allowed to capitalize the software development costs as an intangible asset. So that's something to bear in mind, that research and development is just being expensed, expensed, expensed. But if you are busy with software development, once you reach a point of technological feasibility, and that means where the company basically realizes is, yes, this is working, this is something that we want to bring to market, then they can start capitalizing um, as uh, capitalizing those expenses as an intangible asset. And then they can also amortize, um, and we'll see more of amortization amortization in chapter 11, amortize over uh, the life of the software as opposed to just expensing immediately. Um, if you're doing research and development for another company, so it's not for your own, um, you know, your own purposes, at which point you just have to expense it unless it's software that is technologically feasible, you uh, capitalize those costs, if you can believe this, right, as inventory until the project is uh, completed. So maybe you're busy building something for, for um, another company and you you will have to uh, capitalize as inventory. So this is not for yourself, but for another company. And then, of course, if you buy a company, right, the fair value of any developed technology um is going to be an intangible because you're actually buying uh, some of uh, some of somebody else's technology. So that so if it's your own stuff, you expense it unless you're developing software and it's already technologically feasible. If you're doing the research for someone else, you will uh, actually carry those costs forward as inventory. Um, I guess it's if you're making products and stuff, it's a little bit weird, but that's what you're required to do. I mean, I agree with you, it's a little bit weird. You haven't said that, but I can sense that you probably think it's weird. And then if you're buying a company, it becomes a little bit easier to see whether, you know, the, the developed technology is actually worth buying. So they allow you to treat it as... Um, as a finite or indefinite life intangible, because at that point you've had to go through fair value calculations to see what the future benefits actually are. So I think GAP, um, the FASB is kind of comfortable with purchase, um, you know, R&D in this case, uh, being capitalized if it's been fair valued and there is actually a value, an objective value that's been attached to it. And then the last piece that you'll see in, um, in the text book is that any startup costs, and I mean, a lot of uh, startup costs of, you know, organization expenses, if you create a company, or if, you know, if you set up, um, you know, whatever startup that you want to set up in Silicon Valley, all of that is expensed immediately. Years ago, they used to allow companies to, um, to capitalize some of that. But I think as usual, companies went overboard and started capitalizing things that really should not have been capitalized. And so uh, the FASB just said, you're done. 
um, you know, you will expense everything related to startup costs. So that can get really expensive. It's a lot of, you know, you're a lot of lawyers and accountants and stuff that companies often use, but it's kind of just too bad. Um, they're not allowed to, to capitalize any of that. So that's where the, the chapter ends. Um, for chapter 10, your, the homework has been available on, um, on uh, Connect for a while. Let's just look at our, um, our schedule to make sure that we know what the timing is around that homework. <clears throat> so Monday, 11.01. So where are we now, right? We're here Wednesday, 10.27. On Monday at 6 p.m., the homework is due. You're welcome, just like many people have, to email me to ask me questions if you're struggling with the homework. Remember, things are, uh, we're, we're, you know, getting to like the last month, five weeks to a month of classes. So I know everything is kind of just like, it feels probably like your head's going to explode. There's so much stuff going on, so many classes, so much work that you have to do. I get it. But um, please, you don't have to, you know, I sometimes find that like, even for myself, if I become overwhelmed thinking about all the things I have to do, just try to do one thing. Like, instead of leaving the chapter 10 homework because you're freaking out because you can't do all of it today, why not just do the first question, right? And see today how far you get with the first question. Then at least you have a feeling of relief that you've started and maybe tomorrow you can do another one and so on. And on a day when you have more time, you can try to do the bulk of the work, okay? So um, it's due on Monday. Obviously, I'll see you on Monday. We're starting chapter 11 on Monday, which is going to be, it's going to be wait. Well, you know, should, if I'm saying it's easy, is it really easy, right? But um, way, way less topics than chapter 10, let me put it that way. It's going to be about depreciation, which you already know about, amortization, which you kind of know about already. And then the last piece is impairment, which is new and might be a little bit confusing. And so we'll go slowly through that. But I found over time, you know, as I teach this course, that chapter 10 gives people some headaches, but chapter 11, especially because most of it is depreciation, which we've seen at some point, it's a little bit of a relief. Um, after chapter 10. So chapter 11 starts on Monday. Chapter 10's homework is due on Monday for the people who are faithfully writing and going to give me a term paper draft that's due on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Um, and then I guess, you know, I'm still here until 12.45 if you have questions for me. Otherwise, go and, you know, have a, a lovely day. And if you want to see me for office hours, I'll have them tomorrow at one o'clock. And um, I'm, I may see you at the start of the reg hour because I'm just going to talk to Raphael about making sure that all the e-portfolios are available for me to view. I did send you an email a few minutes ago with uh, Professor Maharaj's um, points that she sent me. If you didn't receive it for some reason or you can't access the email where I sent it to, just send me an email to my regular email and I'll forward the document on to you. All right. So thanks, everybody. Um, have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much, Professor. You're welcome. Hey, professor. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Bye. Bye.